Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you how to import a video into DaVinci Resolve, make a cut and then export it in a suitable format for uploading to YouTube. So let's start. As you can see, when the program first opens, you'll have the projects window and you click on title project here, or you can click new project down the bottom right and it will ask you for a title. So type in a name for your project and then click create. And here we are landed in the cut page. The workflow in DaVinci Resolve is split left to right over a number of pages. First, we've got the media page, which you can use to manage files. It's more useful for multi file source projects. Next, you have the cut page to perform rough edits. Then we have the edit page where you can do some finer work and include effects. Next up, you have the fusion page. This is where you can introduce and work with the effects in more detail. Then you've got the color page. Here you can perform color grading and you can do mask work on your videos. The next page is Fairlight. The Fairlight page allows you to work with the audio tracks. And finally, we have the deliver page where you control the rendering settings for your project and you create your finished videos. And today we're starting our import from the cut page. Of course, you can import in the media page, but as I've said, I personally find this more suited for multi-file projects. And with these simple imports, we can quickly import things in either the cut or edit pages. So to import the source video, you want to go to the file menu, import media. And the shortcut for this is control plus I on the PC. And then once that's open, browse to the location of your file you've made before, might be an OBS MKV file or whatever video file you want to import, click on that file and click open. You'll then be asked if you want to change the project frame rate. This sets your project output to the same FPS as the source, and so that's generally what you're going to want. So click yes to change here. And then the clip will now appear in the media list in the top left. Now we need to click and drag our clip onto the timeline at the bottom of the screen next to the red marker. That red marker is known as the playhead and indicates where you are in your clip. So next, as we look at the clip, we can see that we have a lot of blank screen, a lot of blank space at the start. This is typical of where you've, for example, set OBS recording, but you're still waiting for your app to open or you're performing some setup and you just don't want it to be in the final video. So here in the cut screen, we can either click and hold the time marker to move left and right through the clip, or we can use the navigation controls above the timeline to progress the clip. And there's also fast preview and the jog dial. Either way, use your preferred method to move the clip along to where you want to make your first cut. So having found where we want to make the cut with the playhead in the right place, you just click the playhead into the timeline to do that. We can press control plus B to make our razor mark on the timeline. You can also use the razor tool that's in the menu. This indicates where the clip is going to cut. Now we select the left hand part of the clip, the part we want to cut out. And we have a few options for cutting the clip out. We can right click and cut, we can use delete or backspace keys, or we can go into the menu to use delete or ripple delete. Now ripple means that the timeline will adjust automatically to wherever you remove by shifting the rest of the clip over to the left to fill the gap. However, the cut page behaves slightly differently here to the edit page when you have clips that have combined audio tracks. So you'll see that we actually get a gap left here, which is shown by the gray space. With this, we can just select the gray space and press delete to remove it and the ripple timeline and the timeline will then ripple up. Here, I undo the delete to show you that it's the exact same behavior no matter how we perform the cut in this page. This is not really an issue and you might even prefer the way that this works, but it is why I tend to do most of my cutouts in the edit page instead. Here, we can see the clip in the edit page where we can look at the preview as well. In the edit view, we can move the timeline, we can zoom in and out, we can check that the video looks good. And here I can, you can see me using control B again to mark another cut and then to ripple delete the part of the clip to the left by using the Del key. And then I undo that delete and show you the same thing through the menu. And then I undo that delete and show you what the non ripple delete looks like in the edit page. That's where it leaves the blank space. And finally, I undo again and then scroll through the rest of the video to check that the rest looks okay. 
So this is the point where you would use your Fusion page, Color and Fairlight pages if you want. But for this video, let's move straight to Deliver. In the Deliver page, we can see a preview of the timeline and over to the left hand side, we can see the options for exporting. Moving through them, we can see that there's a YouTube preset and we can use this. It sets a fine set of output parameters for YouTube compatible video. The defaults are generally sensible and usable. Of course, we have to give our clip a name and a location. So let's click browse and do that. And with that set, we can choose here to upload directly to YouTube if we want. I'm not going to do that in this video as I want to preview locally what the output looks like first. So we'll uncheck that box. And now all that remains is to click Add to Render Queue and then go over to the right hand side and click Render All. Rendering takes some time, so we sped it up in this video. Once it's done, you can browse to the output directory and open your MP4 video. You can see that this format opens and plays fine in. Windows Media Player. And with that, we're done. You can upload this video straight to YouTube. I'm going to cut here though to one final example of rendering where I use the H265 codec. This is a more modern codec with some benefits to it, but also tends to be less compatible with various media players. Again, the default settings are typically fairly sane. You can scale the resolution as with the other format, and you can change quality settings and so on. And as before, we render it up by putting it into the queue. You'll see though how this time the render process takes longer and it produces a larger output file. Some say that the quality is better, so I'll leave you to determine that for yourselves. You can see on my PC, Windows Media Player doesn't have the codec to play this video, only the sound. I can open it up in VLC Player and play the clip there, but is it really worth it? It's up to you. By the way, that's all for this video, so thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.